option video, hot yeah. version. I told you since last, since last, hey, so since since last time we uh, filmed at SEMA, you told me come prepared, and I came prepared. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be your RQ. Oh, oh, oh Zico san, I don't have the leopard bikini, you know. But. Oh man. 今回のギャルは青柳でまちゃんよろしくね。Hey, real quick before we start this video, a lot of you guys have been asking for team shirts. Finally, Auto House has t shirts. So it would really help out a lot if you supported the shop, got some merch, some shirts, stickers, support the media work, support me and my dog. Check out that merch store so I don't starve, you guys. Hey, everybody, this is Rico. This is Week of San Jose 2021. Uh, this year I did the collab with Illis. I brought the 2019 SEMA Top 10 Sport Compact. Uh, which is a 1984 Toyota Corolla uh, SR5 with the beams. Also next door, I brought the 1972 uh, 240Z IMSA GTU race car. Also was built for SEMA and that was for 2021. And it is also a top 10 sport compact car for SEMA. So it's all here to share. Ezekiel, what do you want to talk about? First thing, uh, thank you so much. We're doing this inside the car. Week Fest, turn down the music next time. How's anyone supposed to do video work? But, but we're, we're going to make it work. Yeah. So which one broke more next at SEMA? Which one made the bigger impact? You know, I want to say the uh, 86 definitely was more of a crowd pleaser for SEMA. But I'll, I'll just jump into the meat and the potatoes. By chance, Nissan released the 400Z this year. Oh uh, yeah. I did. I did not build the Z because of that. It just lined up. Because I am a media savage person as I am, when Tamura-san walked by my car, who is the designer of the 400Z, he was at SEMA. I... SEMA-san, Tamura-san, can you please spend some time with my car? And he spent quite a large amount of time in my car. I was highly honored by that. For me, speaking with him, speaking with Option Magazine uh, from Japan. Uh, actually, yesterday the Option article just dropped That's right. online. It's live on weboption.com. Everybody go check it out. It's a Rico style write up on the 240Z. But having the designer of the 240Z, former head of Nismo, Come look at the car, have a long in-depth conversation. These are priceless events that are happening because I am building the cars to this level. So to answer your question, was it worth it? It was worth it to the right people. And that means the most to me. Than being a crowd, uh, you know, a crowd pleaser. And uh, totally not to disrespect your bills because both of them are like, top quality SEMA builds, right? Uh, we've had this, you've had this discussion with me, like people don't even realize what these cars are because these are built to SEMA level and we're at a local car show. But immediately the, the thing in my mind was probably why your Z did not get the coverage it deserved was because maybe your Corolla outshined it just because this is much more of like, how do you say, like a working class person's car. Like it's in more people's hearts, whereas like, um, Z for a long time has been like an old man's game. So Tamura san that's like, you know, his dad lust lusted after that car. He does too. Again, not to take credit from both cars, but that's probably why this one still like probably stole a lot of the spotlight. Yeah, and you know, I wasn't depressed or taken aback. It's just the nature of the beach, nature of the animal. But I guess for me, when you build for SEMA, or if you guys want to become a SEMA builder, I built for Toyota Tires, Toyota Tire Tread Pass. Uh, this is the second year doing it. For me, is to try to repeat. Uh, I didn't want to be a hit one hit wonder. That was the driving force behind building for 2021. I would, I did not want to be home. I didn't want to be home watching <laughs> coverage. Like you guys are at home right now watching Weekfest coverage. I didn't want to be you, but we appreciate you joining us. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't want to be home. I wanted to show up. I wanted to come back. And uh, it was super important for me to be there. Um, so I thankfully landed top 10 again. It's a huge accomplishment in itself. 
There's people that have built Prisima for over 10 years and have never broke top 40 Battle of the Builders or, or that type of competitions. Uh, there's people that have built for the same amount of time and they never have gotten inside the main halls or they've never been in the Total Trek Pass. So I am extremely grateful. I'm extremely lots of words in, in my team, Marcus Fry Racing, who builds all the cars. 24 hour setting who does all the body work for all me I mean to do it again at the level and to, like you said this is a SEMA car <clears throat> I do get a lot of flack of why these cars are so expensive you have to realize SEMA is the largest car show in the world that's right you know there's hot rods 1 million 1.5 million dollar builds 8 year builds I cannot show up with a 25 $50,000 build. I have to show up to fight. I have to show up to compete. And I'm not showing up with the Cobra. I'm not showing up with the Shelby Mustang. I'm not showing up with Eleanor. You know, I'm not pulling out a 1957 Bel Air or whatnot. You know, I'm taking these, what we love, right? You and I both love. 86, 1972, 240Z. If I'm gonna show up to fight, I have to invest and that's why these cars look like that because i have to build at this level to get the respect if i'm going to compete on the, the sema stage one thing i think really touched me about these two chassis again talking about this like working car working class chassis that maybe our parents lusted after and i know you've talked before like bigger events like pebble beach and um i think you've told me like you can smell the dust on the money they needing to bring in these cars that they that you know people like my age lusted after yes and that's one key that i saw at today's show down at the hall there's a row of um dc integras and this oh, really and this reminds me of like oh here we go these are the cars that you know used to be throwaway now they're big money and now like my generation is like oh man i wanted to build one of these when i was a kid and now here they are at you know right 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 no the i would say the 86 was that i would say the 86 was me acknowledging the 80s and saying hey these cars can be uh top 10 sema cars yep. these can be uh, toyo tread pass cars but with the 1972 dotson i didn't get the fanfare but I did get a lot of the older crowd come over and they really appreciated someone building a, a period correct IMSA GTU race car from the 70s. Mixed with my own expression. So it's a Rico style Z. Uh, most importantly, I'm running the Mikuni 50s. When Solex licensed Mikuni Japan to produce uh, racing carburetors for Nismo for race purpose only. They were only made back then. You can't buy them brand new. You have to track them down. Street value, thirteen dollars to $20,000 all day long. They go for sale about three times a year in the world. Either you buy it or you don't. I have it. People who walk by that were in, informed and educated, they, they, they ran to the carbs. They ran to the carbs. And that's why when you look over my engine bay, everything is black and shaved, but the carburetors are still in the raw finish, that raw media blast finish, because I want you to focus on why the, why the carburetors are so unique, and that's what's special. Then again, didn't do an LS swap, you know, I didn't put in a Honda S2000 motor. Again, stroke 3.1 L-series block built by Top End Performance in Los Angeles. The head, built by Slover Performance Service in Los Angeles. Just the head will set you back big dollars. Once again, Top End Performance, Slow Reporting Service, old school shops from the 70s. The, you know, the 86, I kind of built it on my own with Battle Garage's help and yours. But it was mainly me digging information from Japan and trying to figure out how to look at I mean, it was really on my own, like doing my own research. The Z, the Z has so much history in America. They have built so many race cars, all kinds of level of cars. The 86, not really, right? That's right. Very, very few. The Z has racing history, BRE, Bob Sharp, show cars, drag cars, everything. 
everything. The point is, is that what I presented was a period correct engine, a 3.1 L series in the 2050s. I'm also running an original set of Nismo made headers for BRE from the 70s that were never fired. They were hanging on the wall of a collector. The other rare part on the car is I'm running Tane coilovers, 4 to 240Z. If you, if you pause the video, go Tane USA, Tane Japan, you look it up, you're not going to see anything. It's not there. You have to make a personal request, send your lowers to Japan, and wait nine months to a year for a turnaround, and you will receive what I have in my car, which is a fully built coilover, painted in the custom tan green with the labeling of the S30. I have that in my car. As we go into the cabin, same thing. I am you know, mimicking the IMSA style spec race cage setup. One seat, you know, with a very Spartan style dash. No speedometer because, do we care? <laughs> do we care how fast we're going? Let's keep going faster. You know, my battery, my wire setup, fire suppression, you know, just power, fuel, fan, fire. You know, fire it up, let's go. Uh, you know, and, and so I, I ran with the bride seat. Uh, I was looking to be sponsored by Lot USA on this build. So I received the bride seat for the car. Uh, if we jump to the outside, I run the Z-Trix IMSA GTU body kit, which is, once again, period correct to the 70s that is a mold off one of the race cars of that era so it is period correct in that sense i decided to go with the genos with no headlights dude once i put the genos on it changes it the car is a new animal if you have a 240z put a genos on yeah. it will change your life i could have not have built the z if i hadn't built the 86. Mm -hmm. So I built that car around the carbs, all right? The only reason I, I was able to purchase the carbs because I knew somebody that knew somebody. Once I was introduced to Takasan, who owns Kusha House in Los Angeles, who sold me the carbs, I informed him that I had built the 86. He was one of the people in the crowd that were pleased by the 86. He says, what are you gonna do? I actually didn't tell him I was going to build a SEMA car at the point. I was just like, you know what, I want to build a 240Z. And he kind of commented, is like, Rico, if you do the 240Z, you're going to fuck up the price again. Oh, man. <laughs> that was his words. Takasan, that's what you said to me. He started calling me. Hey, Rico, I got a 3.1. Fresh motor. You want it? Call me again. I got a set of Nismo headers. You want it? He called me again. I got a set of tank coilovers. You want it? So I was buying all these hard sought after parts from him as a curator in Los Angeles. But the only reason I was able to buy them, one, I had the money, most important, is image. And that's what I, the message I've been telling everybody today is that because of the build quality of the 8.6, because of what I did with the 8.6, you know, not, not out doing donuts, I'm not at sideshows, you know, doing SEMA, uh, doing interviews, high-end photo shoots. He says, if I give these parts to you, I know you're going to be a good caretaker. I know you're going to do something good with the car. So I'm willing to offer them to you. So that is how I was able to acquire all that rare high-end parts. When I moved on to the body kit, it was the same thing. Respect, communication, Z-Trix is the body kit. All the hardware for the suspension is from Arizona Z-Car. All the lower arms, mustache bar for the diff, all the hardware. Once again, an older gentleman, respect on the phone. I do build SEMA. Not in the, not in the way that I want sponsored, but Hi, my name is Rico. I'm a serious builder. This is what I do. Uh, I like your product. Is it available? Do you have it? I'm not answering for sponsorship. Never comes out of my mouth. Ever. I just want help, information, and knowledge, right? The beautiful thing I had about these two gentlemen, Z-Trix, Arizona Z-Car from Arizona, they happen to live nearby each other. 
I was in a crunch of time in June of last year. I called Work Wheels in Japan, my boy Pino-san. Hey, I'm gonna build Prosima. You better give me those numbers now on the wheels because because of COVID, six to nine months delay on manufacturing. And I'm like, dude, SEMA's in November. It's like in four months. He's like, you better give me those numbers now. So I call Z-Tricks and Arizona Z-Car. Do you have the body kit? Do you have suspension? Turns out they know each other. Arizona Z-Car took the parts to Z-Tricks. Z-Tricks drove all the way to Redwood City and Marcus Fry Racing in two weeks. Man. Brought me the full fenders, brought me all the suspension parts. We mocked it all up, measured tires and tires in the rims. I sent the order to work wheels. And that's how I am running the M1s. I'm running 18 by 12 and a half in the back, 18 by 11 and a half in the front. Uh, on the rear, I'm wrapped with R888Rs, 335, 3018s. And in the front, I'm running 335, uh, 1518s. I mean, 3018s. The whole build is on reputation, on respect, on image. That's how that car came came to happen. If I remember correctly, the offset's crazy too, like minus 87 in the rear or something like that. It's minus, uh, I wrote, yeah, negative 85. Yeah. Yeah, you got a good memory. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta come prepared for these interviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, negative 85. But the, uh, you know, that's what I'm trying to hammer with everybody. Because I have built with my guys since 2014, we did not plan the SEMA build. In June, I called Marcus, hey, I'm gonna build for SEMA. He's like, <laughs> really? Really? You're gonna do it again? I'm like, come on, let's do it, dude. I already got all the parts. I already know what we're gonna do. Let's do it. Came with the game plan, came with the budget. He gave me the budget, gave me the estimate. Let's do it. Called up the body shop. Hey, I'm gonna build again. Secure time frame for me. Secure personnel for me. I was more than prepared for the budget this year. I'm like, tell me what it is. This is what it is, Rico. Do it. Let's go. My shops know that I'm gonna pay. You know I'm not gonna haggle with them. They're willing to stop and work. And Ezekiel, you know this, you got a shop. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if you have a well-paying customer and says, hey, Ezekiel, I got a race. I need you to drop everything and do it. It's not that the shop doesn't want to do it. They may be afraid of asking you to pay for the overtime. They may be afraid of asking to charge you the higher rate. But if they feel comfortable and they know you as a customer that you're willing to pay, would you do it? Yeah, 100%. 100% drop everything. Yeah, but but for the right customer. Right, so it's all about respect and how you treat people. And, and so it, it's the past five years, the past six years, Marcus was willing to drop jobs to build my car. My body shop was willing to dedicate three people for about 45 days on my car. It's the image. It really matters what kind of car you're driving. It really matters what it looks like. It really matters the imagery and the quality that you're putting out because as you want to move up that step, if you need parts or you want someone's help, people are going to look up your Instagram, you know, look up your Facebook, show me what you're doing, show me what you're building. If what you have to show is not up to par, you're going to get that no. You're yeah. going to get that door closed and I'm just telling you that's why. That's why it's happening. Why don't we talk about some of the parts on the cars? Sure. So. For me, when this car came out, the centerpiece was that engine cover and the throttles. For this one, my probably my favorite centerpiece, the eye catcher, is your name on the valve cover. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. How did that happen? Yeah, so <laughs> so I noticed that the new hot thing in Japan was the custom valve cover. I I, uh, I seen a guy on the sunny at Weekfest in Nagoya had it, and he was a show winner. And I did some digging on Instagram, and it turns out it's a guy in New Zealand called B Speed and he mills out the valve covers uh, for various engines and he also does the L series. Uh, what most people do is they'll do Nismo or they'll put the engine size and I said no. I want to put my name on it and I want to put my branding on it which is Rico Sal and Kanji. So I drew it up for how I wanted it to be, send it over. Uh, I want to say the turnaround was about I want to say maybe about one month 
turnaround. It was wow. pretty fast. Wow. And yeah, it is. As I build, I'm learning more that I want to give more details on on the car. The cars are minimal in style of how they're built, but there is a lot of details. The valve cover. Uh, if we go to the outside of the car, you see I have branding on the car in English and Rico on the on the fenders and on the nose of the car. If we go to the side of the car, I have another branding in Kanji that says Rico is real gold. Yeah, it's that, and it's on the trunk. And so what that means is that Rico's real gold, real gold and a naming is used for soda pop mainly in Japan. So uh, on the car I have a sticker real gold with a soda pop, which is actually more alluding to a Peruvian soft drink. And so it, re it reads Rico's really gold, the golden style. Mm -hmm. So just having fun with intertwining me and Japanese culture. Last night, the option article just dropped and everybody's reading the pictures. They're seeing the kanji on the valve cover. They're seeing the kanji on the side of the car. And the response I got back was, Rico, you are creating this bridge between America and Japan. You are you're doing it. And for me, that was, that was like receiving another award, uh, hearing that back home from the OGs. When I talked to Tamura-san, who built the who designed the 400Z? I said, "Hey, I'm just trying to be a good student, right? If you're just on week car shows, YouTube, you never really talk to the Japanese business people that come in the industry. You would think they know that we like Japanese cars, but do you love the Japanese culture? And to be honest, there are a lot of times they're surprised, and they were asking me like." Why are you so, why are you so into it? Like, what is it? I mean, we, we grew up on it. We grew up on it. We grew up watching Robotech, you know? Uh, Akira, I mean, uh, name it, whatever anime. And, and then and then all the hot version. That's why he's got the, the little pointer. I mean, we, we, it was second nature education for us so as we come of age it's only natural but for me to be honest why i think a lot of people like japanese cars it was the underdog everybody loves the underdog because what was hot when the 80s and 90s 9-11 testarossa but what happened in the 90s japanese tuning happened yeah that's right when you saw a honda civic Spanking a Lamborghini Diablo. Yep. Yep. It was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that 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 blew everybody's mind. And for me, growing up, growing in the United States, and how my life was in the beginning, I felt like an underdog. I felt like you know at a slight disadvantage, and we're fighting uphill. And so I can, even though Japanese are not American. I connect with the Japanese brands because it was always an underdog brand in the US. You know, the American brands are dominant and the European brands are more affluent. So no, it still it still connects with me in that way. And even though I am uh, thankfully as successful in life and business, I still face those uphill battles on a day to day. It's just a part of life. It is what it is. Figure it out. And no, that's why I, I have a huge connection with the Japanese culture. One thing new I know you're trying to do, at least with this car, is actually take this to the track. Yes. Uh, is that true with the other car also? Yes, 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 yes. So the whole idea is that due to my, same thing as, nothing has changed. I still work all the time. Uh, I work much more. And that's why I was able to pull off that car to a higher level. But uh, 2022, we may or may not build for SEMA for myself personally. Um, and we're gonna try to focus on going through all the cars and getting them to the track. I really wanna break that. I wanna make that bridge from SEMA, or as we are today at Car Show, to the track. I, j just like you do, 
and I do, we all have watched those amazing Sukuba Time Attack videos of these beautiful tuner cars at the track. And I feel I would love to see that here in the U.S. Not that it's not there, but I would love to help out and add into it and try to create some more enthusiasm. Hey, every, every track person I have talked to welcomes me coming. I have talked about my ideas and the future, um, future comp accomplishments I would like to uh, have. And everybody's, everybody's positive. Yeah. Nobody's saying Rico don't come. Everybody's like, Rico, tell me when you're going to track and I want to be there to run with you. Yeah, I know you've told me before, um, different with the Japanese track culture is like everyone tries to come together to make the track successful and make the track days happen. Where it's a little different in the US where like there's like little, there's a lot of little factions, unfortunately, like squabbling against each other. Mm. Yeah. And then the other thing too, that um, I feel like the Japanese really realize in the top level of motorsports, um, your car has to look the part. Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that Kaisan dropped on me uh, a few years ago. He says, Rico, it has to look good. It has to. It has to, it has to be fast, but it's got to look good, no matter what. It's got to look good. That's the truth. Yeah. And they put down the time, and the cars look good. In here in the US, we are more technical and fun functional, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you guys, do, they, they may put down the track time, but nobody's taking a picture of the car. Nobody's making a t shirt of the car. Nobody, none of the kids are putting that car up on a poster like they used to. Right, yeah, right, right. right. I mean, I mean uh, we can go through all the Arimania, Jay's racing cars that are on kids' walls. Uh, There's a top secret replica car right in front of us. Right, and yeah. I don't know anybody that has any, uh, you know, Time Attack US based cars on the, some kid's wall. No, it's just no, absolutely not. It's really unfortunate, but absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. But I applaud everybody for having putting their effort in motorsport or car shows or SEMA. It's just there's enough room for all of us. There's enough room for everybody to do their own style. Uh, I'm just trying to push Rico's style and uh, and see where it can go. Well, Rico, thank you so much for your time, especially um, letting us sit inside your car. Um, one more time, Weekfest. Hey, how is media supposed to do this if the music is this loud? <laughs> Last question for you. Three keys to success in either personal or business life. Three, The three keys, your top three. My top three is that you know, I was thinking about as I was coming home today, driving here today, is that you need to love yourself. If you are broke, don't promote being broke. Broke is not a style. It's just a period of life or stage in the life that you are in right now. You need to look in the mirror and learn to love yourself and know that you, can, you need to be in a better place. Now that doesn't mean you need to hate yourself and get depressed. Love yourself and know that you can get out of it. And get out of that situation and move on to the next stage of your life. That's, you know, it's, it's, it's so important. You know, there's nothing wrong with putting your head down, walking to work, taking the train, taking Uber, get to work, do what you need to do, advance in your life, if you guys want to join us doing cars, buying homes, traveling, whatever you feel that's going to be successful, it will happen if you get your ass out of bed and go to work, damn it. I, I mean, bar none. I don't care what you're doing. Get off your ass every day and go to work. Make that money. Learn a crap. Excel in it. And the doors will open. I, I mean, it's it, it really is, guys. And it, this is only one life. If you're not happy with your life, make that adjustment. Everything, there's so much information on YouTube everywhere, but hey, what are you waiting for? Your second chance? There is no second chance. You need to do it. So what I've heard so far, love yourself, get your ass up, go to work. What's the, what is the third one? What is the third key to uh, personal or business success? The third one is respect. Respect the people that have come ahead of you. I know new gen get a lot of slack, but real talk, you need to talk to people who have done it before you, more successful than you, and learn from them. You know, I 
whatever Bitcoin or Dropship or Amazon, whatever app you guys are doing nowadays, the rules of running a business, the rules of making money have not changed. Learn from your elders, observe, absorb, and then you can customize it to your own life. My success would not be without my parents, would not be learning from other people that are in my industry. Why start from scratch? I mean, Ezekiel, would you start working on the 86s without the Toyota manual? No, like, of like, not. Why? Why would you be like, okay, I'm going to educate myself on what a 4AG is today. No, no, you're going to read a book, watch some videos, you become a licensed mechanic. Yeah. So why are you going to go in live raw? Why? It's all there. Mom and dad, your uncle, your older brother. Just listen. Listen. That's my message. Well, thank you so much, Rico. I really hope we can have this opportunity. Maybe at, um, I know you're re rebuilding your whole backyard to make this like an automotive or like a hangout space. Hopefully we can do this in a uh, quieter and more conducive oh, yeah, environment. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have a cappuccino espresso in a lounge. Uh, right now I'm building Rico's garage. Uh, I, I plan to be a very uh, lounge space, garage life, Japanese inspired. So yeah, that's a new project I'm working on. And actually this week, uh, I'm probably going to be adding three lifts in the garage. No way. Wow. Yeah, so it's going to be dope. And uh, yeah, I welcome everybody to share on Instagram, enjoy the pictures and all that. So thank you, Ezekiel. Thank you, Rico. I really appreciate it. And with that being said, why don't we touch fingers? Ooh! <laughs> cool. Appreciate it, man. I'll catch you next time.